Hello everyone, my name is Marius Psychogios. And uh, Danny Bemer. We are interventional neuroradiologists from Göttingen, Germany. And we are going to show you our uh, SAVE technique. Uh, basically, it's not only our technique. We discussed this technique with uh, Dr. Botsaris from Köln and also uh, Professor Wiesmann from Aachen. And we also have prepared a paper which is going to be online uh, hopefully in a couple of weeks. So, um, SAVE technique, what do, do we mean? So, that's basically that? uh, the acronym for Stent Retriever Assisted Vacuum Locked Extraction of Clots. And what it basically means is a combined approach, uh, it's a variation of Salumbra or ARDS. And we are going to discuss in the video the uh, details that um, are specific in our technique and uh, why we think and why we also have seen very good results uh, with it uh, up until now. So we have started using the SAFE technique in um, 2016, in the early months of 2016. And uh, right now we have done, uh, I think, around 60, 70 cases with yeah. it. We have evaluated the first uh, 32 cases from the German centers. And uh, what was uh, especially good, we had a very high first pass uh, TK3 uh, rate with around 70%. And that was independent of the center and the operator doing it. So it's basically because of the technique we're using. Exactly. And it also, we included the first cases we did here also in Göttingen. So yeah. we also have in, in this 70% the uh, operator's learning curve. So maybe it's going to be better. We are going to see about this in, in 2017. Okay, so um, we now see the first angiogram. It's a typical M1 occlusion with good collaterals from the anterior, uh, as you can see in the late phase. And this is a typical setup we use for our safe technique. So we use an eight French sheet. Uh, usually, uh, I prefer to use a long sheet, uh, but you know, uh, when you have uh, older patients, it's not so easy to navigate with a long eight French sheet uh, to the carotid artery. So then you have to use a short sheet and a guide catheter. Um, and then uh, we use simultaneously and prepare them uh, a six French aspiration catheter for proximal occlusions. So when you have a carotid T occlusion or the proximal M1 occlusion, we take the Sophia Plus or an ACE uh, 68. For more distal occlusions, we go for uh, six range catalysts or um, A60, for example. Exactly, and if you're gonna go, if you want to go to distal M2, uh, well, maybe that's a good idea or a better idea to take the the five French Sophia for an aspiration catheter. So we start the intervention uh, with uh, with all catheters and uh, also a micro catheter. And uh, well, that's the first uh, step uh, of our technique. We try to pass the uh, thrombus, uh, the occlusion site, with a microcatheter. And you already can see the, the intermediate catheter uh, being pushed up to the level of the distal carotid to have a bit more stable position. Yeah. And also, the microcatheter is in the M1 occlusion to stabilize the, the wire. If we freeze the image right now, you can see the, the microcatheter is at the uh, height of the occlusion and the microwire is going uh, uh, rostrally. It's, it's going into the um, uh, anterior temporal artery, so you better should take care of, you know, not um, guiding for a very small branch of the MCA and try to find a big uh, M2 division of the MCA to, to be sure to be in, a, in, in the true uh, lumen and to safely uh, perform the procedure. Okay, so if we see right now, I uh, retracted a little bit the one microwire and then uh, try to find a bigger M2 uh, branch. So as you can see, now I push my microcatheter. A special thing about the safe technique is that we try to uh, position our standard retriever distally to the um, occlusion side with uh, two thirds of, of the standard retriever and only place the proximal third of the standard retriever at the occlusion side. So firstly you have to navigate to a distal M2 branch with, with a microcatheter as we can see now. And uh, of course, you then retract your microwire and uh, just test the position so that you can be sure that you're in a bigger M2. Uh, so in a, yeah, uh, you can see branch. very very gently injection to to verify the uh, the correct position of the microcatheter, and then it's flushed again with saline. 
so you can push your stent retrieval without uh, too much force afterwards. And what you can see here is the stent retriever coming up to the position of the microcastator. You can see the patient moving, so basically we do a lot of them, or most of them, awake. Yeah. Um, so don't be too afraid if you see all the head shaking, but um, that's how we position the stent. Exactly. So when we are at the position of the tip with the stent retriever, we start pulling back the microcatheter to have a portion of the stent retriever unsheeted, as you can see now. And then when you have unsheeted about half of the stent retriever and you are at the position of the, of the thrombus, you, you then have to start pushing the wire of the stent retriever. So no more pulling back of the microcatheter, you just have to push with a, a stent retriever, with the wire of the stent retriever, and this is called the active push technique uh, or the push and fluff technique. So you can see now I'm starting to push and I still unsheet the stand retriever. And then after that, we also fluff the whole system. So you just pull, uh, push the whole system, microwire and microcatheter towards um, the aspiration catheter. Uh, and that um, has the con uh, consequence that you, you just help the stand retriever opening within the thrombus. Okay. So you can see the fluff maneuver right now. And this is a very interesting uh, picture where you can see how the stent is uh, uh, implanted uh, with a proximal third at the uh, thrombus at the occlusion side. Oh. And you can see some narrowing of the, of the stent at the uh, position of the thrombus. So to, to have a stable position of the stent in order to have a good interaction with the clot, we are now waiting for about two minutes. And afterwards we start uh, with uh, retracting the microcatheter in order to then have a large lumen within the intermediate to aspirate afterwards. Yeah, that's described uh, in a publication of uh, Wiesmann et al. Uh, it's, I think it's called the Burr wire technique. You can maximize the lumen inside the aspiration catheter by retracting the microcatheter. And usually this can be easily done because the, the position of the stand is very, very stable in most of the cases. Exactly, that's one point. Uh, the position of the stand is stable. Another point is at the beginning, you don't have to um, lose time uh, by pushing the aspiration catheter past the site, past the origin of the ophthalmic artery. This can be sometimes uh, time intensive, so we just park the aspiration catheter at the clinoid segment um, uh, under the origin of the uh, ophthalmic artery. And uh, as you pull back the microcatheter in this step of the technique, then the aspiration catheter advances to the occlusion site without pushing. If you have to push it a little bit, you can do it, and then uh, you can start with your aspiration. So, so you can see now we, we lock the uh, stent retriever um, in the entrance of the intermediate to be able to pull back both things simultaneously, and then we now have the aspiration pump. Exactly, so as you can see now, we hold the stand retriever wire with my right hand at the moment, and I try to push the aspiration catheter towards the face of the thrombus. That's the first step. And you are doing this under permanent and uh, pump aspiration, as you can see. So we continue now with pushing of the aspiration catheter and pulling of the stand retriever wire. And as you can see now, my colleague is showing there, we don't have any flow of the, uh, in, the, in the aspiration catheter in the system right now. So you see there is no flow on the pump uh, while going up with the intermediate passive way, and now we wedge the thrombus more or less in between the, the tip of the intermediate and the, the stent. So that's what we see here. Exactly, and you continue with slow movements of pulling uh, the stand wire and pushing the aspiration catheter. So after you have reached a vacuum in your aspiration catheter, you don't longer need the pump uh, to maintain vacuum, so then we switch to a um, vaclog syringe. And uh, you can see now uh, I use a Wacklock syringe on the aspiration catheter. My colleague is uh, changing uh, and uh, applying uh, the pump aspiration uh, on the um, guide catheter. Well, actually, if you do have two pumps, then use two pumps. 
of course. <laughs> <laughs> well, we obviously don't have, so we have to use this system. But you can see it's, the vacuum is locked because the, the lumen of the intermediate is rather small and you can do that with the syringe as well. Exactly, the tip is clocked with uh, thrombus. So, uh, so okay. now we're preparing the extraction and now having the pump on the uh, guide sheet to be able to have the aspiration on the guide while retracting the stent in the intermediate. And that's something very important about the safe technique. Exactly. That, that's another specification of, of our technique that we always perform a proximal aspiration uh, combined with a distal aspiration and stent viva. Uh, and um, you can imagine if distal aspiration is very important in the moment when you perform Salumbra, for example. Uh, as a lot of people do actually, yeah. and you're retracting the, the whole unit uh, with a thrombus inside the tip of the guide catheter, you can lose some uh, thrombus fragments and then you have distal emboli or um, ENTs. So we start with the aspiration proximally now. And you can see now we, we're slowly retracting the whole system. The stent retriever is locked at the end of the intermediate and we're slowly retracting both of them. And now you can see head shaking. The patient is obviously aware of what's happening. And, and if we stop the video one time, you can see there is also um, blood in the aspiration system proximally now. So you all already aspirate with a guide catheter at the moment. And this is another uh, thing why I or we usually try to use the long uh, sheet that has an inner lumen of 2.9 millimeters. And uh, that means you have a, a relatively big uh, rest lumen, uh, even if you use a bigger aspiration catheter to aspirate proximally. So while retracting now, you can see sometimes um, there is some kind of or some portion uh, of the stent retrieval being retracted inside the aspiration catheter and this is normal because at the beginning uh, trying to reach the, reach the wedge position you have to push the aspiration catheter so you have some uh, shortening of the tip and by pulling back the wire you then have some uh, elongation of the aspiration catheter to, uh, towards the um, stand retriever distal portion. Okay, so we continue retracting slowly. This has to be carefully and slowly because you don't want to lose any thrombus. And once you enter the, the guide sheet, you can be a bit faster. And then, and now you continue with proximal aspiration. We usually leave the aspiration for some seconds at least, some but seconds. until we see there's free flow, and then we disconnect it. We see there's free blood flowing out the, the guide to be absolutely sure that you did not lose any thrombotic material within the catheter that you, by injecting a uh, conscious agent, would then inject into the brain again. Exactly, and as you can see now, this is a, an image of the of this uh, thrombus uh, uh, after removing uh, the the standard retriever, and you can see the proximal um, part of the thrombus is located within the proximal part of the stent retriever, and uh, we have also a portion on the on the distal part, so that's the um, rationale uh, behind the uh, distal placement of the stent retriever. Uh, the idea that while retrieving you may lose some fragments and if you place a stand retriever distally to the thrombus you can then catch those uh, thrombus uh, fragments with, with your distal portion of the stand retriever. Yeah, you, you kind of uh, have a distal embolization protection, uh, protection device so um, yeah. that's working well in most of the techniques in our point of view that's one of the major reasons for the high rate of Tiki 3 results because we're most of the cases are not losing any thrombotic material into the distal uh, um, into the distal MCA then. Yeah, and if you also see other techniques like the captive that's been published a couple of weeks ago in uh, JNIS, they also use this distal placement and propagate the distal placement. That's a new thing compared to arts, for example. But uh, I think the special thing that we also combine is uh, the proximal aspiration. So. All in all, it's clear uh, we we don't we haven't found a new um, <laughs> material or a new device that we were using, but we are using a combination and a variation of previously described techniques with an addition of some extra stuff. And the point is that if you are going to use this technique with the steps we described, you are going to have probably, as we have seen, a very good results in the majority of cases after. Um, a uh, few passes with your uh, materials.
Yeah, that's also a small uh, portion. I usually leave the um, RHV attached, so then you have to flush the RHV to be sure that you don't have any thrombi on your in your RHV uh, after um, stent reading. Uh, Daniel is usually, usually just yeah. disconnecting it, so you don't have to flush it. Thank you. To me, in my opinion, it's a bit safer to completely unlock it than you be sure that you have no material within that you can inject again. Yeah. Then we're gonna see the recanalization, hopefully. Yes, it's removed. Uh, and then we also want to document the rare perfusion on the media territorium. So you see some lateral images here where you can see after one pass TK3 and um, no ENTs. Okay, so that was our description of, of the save technique. Uh, I hope, or we hope we, you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions or suggestions, uh, feel free to um, email us uh, on this email. And um, or visit our website, that's onestopinstroke.eu yeah. for more information on what we're doing and who we are and uh, watch our videos that will be coming <laughs> soon. <laughs> okay, bye. Bye.